Missouri just lost out on one of its biggest targets for 2023. Where does this Tiger football recruiting class stand? Well, let's talk about that and more coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hail you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball five days a week. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online where the game starts. And you know what? Before we get to the recruiting, Jag, actually, let's start with with the quarterback position. just I just want to clean something up a, a little bit here. Another fairly obvious benefit. I talked last time about how I thought this was definitely the right move by Eli Drinkwitz to name Brady Cook his starter at this moment. But another fairly obvious benefit may go without saying, but I want to say it anyway. This means that Brady Cook is going to get all the first team reps for the next two and a half weeks until, or three weeks, however long it is until Missouri kicks off. I guess it's less than three weeks now. Be 20 days, I do believe, if I'm doing my quick math here. I know you're all impressed. But in all seriousness, that's a big thing. Not only just for confidence, for camaraderie, just getting that, the the sixth sense between him and his receivers. I, I think this is all very important. Not that Cook hasn't been throwing to these guys all off season, but hey, let's take out all the guesswork and get the best the best guys, the best eleven we can out on the field as much as possible and, and try to get that chemistry going with Brady Cook. And by the way, I've seen a little bit of confusion online. Some people have been wondering, gee, does this mean Jack Abraham isn't going to stay around at Missouri? Well, He's definitely going to be staying around at Missouri, folks. If he wants to continue to play college football, it's going to have to be here. He had to petition the NCAA for a medical waiver this season, I do believe. So this is absolutely his last season of college football, barring something completely and utterly unprecedented and unforeseen. So at this point in camp, yeah, Jack Abraham is definitely here to stay. He's going to be on this Missouri roster for 2022. Now, frankly, Tyler Macon is another story. I I really hope Tyler sticks around. I like him as a player. I like him as a kid. But who knows? If I were him, I'd be looking at the tea leaves here and going, well, looks like Brady's going to start this year. Looks like Sam Horn is coming in strong. Perhaps he's going to push for for playing time as early as next season. I, I just could see Tyler maybe looking around a little bit, seeing if there's maybe another opportunity for him out there. But You know what? We've talked enough about the quarterback position. Let's talk about some of the guys who protect the quarterback. And I tell you, it's really good to hear that Missouri left tackle Javon Foster is generating quite a bit of NFL buzz, it seems, these days. Now, I will be 100% honest with each and every one of you and tell you that I don't even really attempt to evaluate individual offensive line play. Now, I'm pretty pretty good at telling if Missouri is winning the battle at the line of scrimmage or not as a group, but frankly, again, grading offensive linemen in, on an individual basis, not my cup of tea whatsoever, and I think if 99% of football watchers are honest with themselves, they probably aren't that good at it either. Even if they were a quarterback themselves on a team, unless you actually played offensive line, I, I just don't take a lot of people's opinions that seriously at that position. But regardless, if the smart people in the NFL think Javon Foster's really good, hey, hey, I'll go with that. And it and if you're Brady Cook, it it can't hurt your confidence whatsoever to know that, hey, your blind side is probably pretty well protected. And for as much talk as there's been from Eli Drinkwitz himself about how he wants to be a more aggressive play caller this year, especially in terms of taking shots down the field In the passing game, well, it's hard to get the ball downfield if you're worried about your blind side as a passer. There's no question about that. By the way, 
even though I just admitted that I'm not an an individual offensive line savant whatsoever. In fact, quite the opposite. I just have a feeling that Connor Tolleson is going to be good for Missouri. I really do. Again, a guy who, coming out of high school, had a really good rank, a four-star type player. I've heard observers at camp say he looks athletic, coming out of his blocks, pulling around the end, all that good stuff. Just seems like a guy who's got his head screwed on right, seems like a smart young man, all that good stuff. It just seems like he's a good fit at that center position. Again, this is all just vibes, just me feeling it out and feeling out, frankly, what the coaches and other players are saying about young Connor Tolleson. I was worried when Vince Polgar was ruled ineligible, the Buffalo transfer. Certainly in depth terms, that is a little bit worrisome, but I think perhaps Connor Tolleson would have eventually won this job anyway. But regardless, if he is your starter, it certainly would be nice to see him anchor that position for a few years to come. Now, earlier in the offseason, speaking of the offensive line position, I talked a lot about how this is a really important cycle in terms of recruiting for the Missouri offensive line for the future. Just a lot of really good prospects in this state and in this area. But unfortunately, one of those big prospects, East St. Louis lineman Miles McVeigh, has committed to Alabama. And guess what, folks? I hate to say it when Alabama comes comes calling more often than not. If you're Missouri, you're probably going to lose that recruiting battle. I think Miles was genuinely, genuinely into Eli Drinkwitz and Missouri and all that good stuff early in the process. But hey, again, he didn't have Alabama early in the process. So, you know, that's that's going to happen. You win some, you lose some, I suppose. Not much you can really do about that, but McVay was one of three linemen that I really put a spotlight on in my previews for this upcoming class, and it hurts to lose him. It really does, but fortunately, there is one more one more of those three guys out there. Again, Caden Green committed, the Lee Summit product committed to Oklahoma. Fortunately, he grew up in Oklahoma as an Oklahoma fan, so not a big surprise there. You were hoping Missouri could maybe make some inroads, but it does look like another Kansas City product, Raytown's Logan Reichert, still looks like a Missouri lean at this point, according to all the recruiting services that I follow. But at the same time, again, after what was just an incredible last class for Missouri where they got five of the top ten players in the state, and if you want to throw in Luther Burden in there, you got six of the top 11 there. And if you want to include East St. Louis as part of the Missouri area, fine and dandy. You can make it even look better and say that Missouri got six of the 11 in the area. But the Tigers so far with just two of the top 10, they could get one more. There's a four-star safety from Cardinal Ritter in St. Louis named Marvin Burks, who Missouri seems to be in decent shape with. Not sure which way he's leaning. That could be then three of the top 10 if you want to expanded out to 12. Well, Missouri did get Josh Manning, who's rated as a four-star receiver. But again, not the same thing as 2022. Is this something that we should be worried about? Well, let's talk more about Mizzou football recruiting and some basketball targets to keep your eyes on as well. But first, I want to tell you about Bet Online, the number one fastest and easiest way to check in on all your gambling needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. And there's just all types of good of all all types of good props out there. A lot of team NFL props that I get into this time of year. I'm kind of wanting to fade the Arizona Cardinals. That's one of my first. I think their over under is nine and a half, something like that. I should I shouldn't talk out of my out of the side of my mouth here. I don't even know the odds. Gosh darn it! But you know where you can find it. You can find the exact odds over at BetOnline.net, where the game starts. Clearly, while Eli Drinkwitz may not have elevated the wins and losses at Missouri as of yet anyway, he certainly has elevated the recruiting rankings to nearly unprecedented status. Of course, last season was really the crown jewel so far, a top 15 class as high as maybe 12th or 13th, I believe, depending on which outlet you want to go with there. But so far, 
I think it is time to start getting a little bit concerned about the 2023 class. Perhaps that 2022 class was just a bit of an outlier and we need to reset our expectations a little bit. But so far, I again, a couple months ago, I cautioned some Missouri fans, hey, don't look at the recruiting rankings just yet. Well, now we're starting to get to the time where it's it's starting to matter a little bit more because more and more of the top players, as, as you can see with Miles McVay as a great example, more of these guys are actually starting to make real commitments. And the more guys at the top who start making commitments, well, then it's a bunch of three-star guys who start filing their way in, guys who have been sort of, I don't know, on the back burner, on the waiting list, if you will. So, these classes are going to start filling out pretty quickly, but so far, Missouri, 69th in the country, according to Rivals.com. Now, it looks a little bit better. A part of that is because of the small amount of commitments that Missouri currently has. For instance, Missouri, with nine commitments, just as a, a, an example, Alabama with 19 commitments so far. So they have 10 more guys. But to be fair, there are some examples. Texas A&M has been recruiting at a very high level. They only have nine commitments so far, too. So while it is time to be, I think, concerned about the 2023 recruiting class, it's not time to panic just yet. There is still time for, again, if Logan Reichert signs, that's another four-star player, that'll shoot Missouri's recruiting rankings up a good bit. Still probably not going to be in the top 50 or anything, but that'll certainly help without a doubt. But mostly, again, it's just the num the actual amount of players that Missouri has is why its recruiting rankings are so low. Certainly, I think by the time this is over, Missouri will at least be in the top 40 or so. I've got to imagine Somebody correct me if I'm wrong out there. Maybe you want to argue with that. But yeah, let's worry a little bit, but let's not panic. That's what I'll say at this point. I do think it's fair to say that the ceiling of the 2022 class probably is more like the ceiling. I don't think you're going to see too many classes that are that good, at least on, on paper, at least until Missouri starts winning quite a few more games. Now things are looking a little bit more up on the basketball side of the recruiting equation. And, well, Dennis Gates, it sounds like he might take as many as two or three more high school players. Already having Trent Pierce in the fold, the small forward, the lanky small forward who can score. Also, Anthony Robinson, the pure point guard with a, with a real edge to his game that I, I enjoy, a real competitive fire to him, I think that Missouri fans will really like, especially if you listen to Jason Jordan from Sports Illustrated I recently had on the podcast. But it sounds like, again, two or three more high school guys, as many as that. But if there's one guy who may look, be looking likely to recruit to commit rather soon, well, it could be Chris Parker, who's listed as a six foot eight shooting guard from Quincy, Florida. Decent chance he is your next commit to Missouri. It sounds like the Tigers are are really, really in on that young man. Obviously, the Florida ties back to Charlton Young and, and Dennis Gates, their time at Florida State. They've got really deep roots down there. Parker currently ranked, according to Rivals.com, as the 65th best player in the class of 2023. So again, that's right there where Missouri should be striking in my opinion I, I i would love that pickup if they got chris parker keep your eyes peeled to twitter hopefully we'll see the dennis gates fist pump celebration meme sooner rather than later and coming up i think greg sankey has been a really good commissioner for the southeastern conference for the most part so i was disheartened to hear that he is trying to destroy college basketball as well as college football is already trying to destroy itself. So let's talk more about Greg Sankey's horrible idea coming up right after this. Generally speaking, and I'm sure there are exceptions to this, but if a person has to invoke another sport in order to make an argument for radical change in something in another sport that already is incredibly popular, well, it's probably not a very good argument. And I hate to say it, Greg Sankey made a pretty bad argument for expanding the field of 68 in the NCAA 
men's basketball tournament because instead of coming up with an example of a bubble team that eventually won the national championship, for instance, no, instead he went with this past 2022 when Mississippi, the last team into the the field of 64, won the title. Well, okay, that's ridiculous, right? Baseball and basketball have very, very little in common, especially when you're talking about a a single game and and double elimination in a lot of cases. However the heck the college baseball World Series works, people. That's not my field of expertise, as you can tell. But no, I I know just it's not a seven-game series. It's not like Major League Baseball. Yes, there's double elimination and all that stuff, three-game series, That's just, that's a lot of of randomness and and a small sample size for baseball. Yeah, the 64th team into that tournament can win it all. I understand. That's not basketball. I'm sorry, it's just not. The best example you can even come up with as a Missouri fan is obviously the 2001-2002 Tigers, a team that squeaked into the NCAA tournament as a 12 seed and ended up making a run, nearly made it to the Final Four, obviously, before losing in the Elite Eight to Oklahoma behind, among other things, Clarence Gilbert's dislocated finger from the previous game. I think that probably cost us as much as anything. But, oh man, now I'm getting depressed. But wait, where was I? Ah, yes, the NCAA tournament. I just can't, I can't imagine all these people who want to expand. First of all, did we really need the play-in games? Well, no, we didn't, but here we are. 68, I can live with 68. Anything further than that, though, to me, is another death to the infidels moment. I, I just can't have it. There's no reason for it other than just trying to get more games that you can sell off to your various broadcast partners, get them to bid them up. And again, it's a bunch of money for everybody except the athletes because, again, that'll be for the NIL boosters to deal with. No, God forbid the athletes ever get a a slice of the real money, which is the TV money. Again, we're just going to expand this TV money relentlessly until apparently we ruin the sport of college basketball, of college football, You know, college basketball has some problems right now. One of them is not the NCAA tournament. In fact, the NCAA tournament is far and away the best part about college basketball. There's no one who can really disagree with me on this. The the ratings speak for themselves. The level of interest, the amount of money bet over at betonline.net on on March Madness, it's undeniable. It's It's one of the signature moments on the sports calendar. And yet people like Greg Sankey want to ruin it. I'm sorry, as good as Greg Sankey has been in a lot of ways, that is absolute madness that I will not stand for. So with all that being said, thanks for joining me once again here on Locked on Mizzou. In the coming weeks, I'll talk to Jason Jordan once again about basketball recruiting, John Garcia about football recruiting. Going to have lots of great content for you here on Locked on Mizzou. And if you want more Southeastern Conference content, get more on the SEC by making Locked On SEC your second listen today. Once again, that's Locked On SEC with Chris Gordy and a whole bunch of good guests. He's a good booker, I'll tell you that. So check out Chris Gordy once again on Locked On SEC. So until next time, I'm John Miller, and thanks for listening to Locked on Mizzou.